Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to write symbol equations in three easy steps. Stay around to the end of the video where I'm going to give you some practice questions to check you understand it. So the first example says sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid to make sodium sulfate and water. Write the symbol equation for this reaction. Now even though the question doesn't ask for the word equation, step one is to write the word equation because this helps you get the right things on the right side of the arrow. So the two reactants that are reacting together go on the left, so that would be sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. And then the two products will be on the right, sodium sulfate and water. Then step two is to write the formulas underneath. So if you're still not sure about writing formulas, see my previous video about how to write formulas the easy way. And if you're not sure about balancing equations, go back to the video before that one, because these two steps you need to know to be able to complete this task. So writing the formulas, we could, sodium hydroxide, sodium is in group one, so that forms a one plus, just as a quick recap. And hydroxide is one of those polyatomic ions. You need to remember two things making one ion, oxygen and hydrogen, and that's a one minus. So we can see from here, we've got the charge balanced already. One Na is one plus, one hydroxide is one minus. So one plus and one minus is fine. So it's just NaOH. So fioric acid is one of those formulas you just need to remember, H2SO4 and sodium sulfate well each sodium is a one plus and the sulfate is a two minus so to get equal numbers of positive and negative here we're going to need two na so it becomes na2so4 and we all know that water is h2o so if we're doing this first step that i've just written in blue that would get you one mark of a two mark question the second mark is for balancing it so step three is to balance the equation so let's see what we've got to start with. We've got one Na on the left, two on the right, one S on each side, five O's on each side because we've got one O on the left in NaOH and four in the H2SO4. And we've got three H's on the left altogether and we've got two H's on the right. So let's start by balancing the Na on the left. So we need two on the left. We can't mess with the small numbers, remember. We can only put big numbers in front. So we put a big two in front of NaOH to give us two Na's. But you'll see it's also changed the O's and the H's. So altogether we've got six O's on the left and we've got four H's on the left. So we can see we need to balance the H's still. So we've got four on the left because we've got two in NaOH and we've got two in H2SO4, but we've only got two on the right. So we're going to put a big two in front of H2O. That now gives us our four H's, but it's also changed the O's. And when we look at the numbers on each side, we can see we've got two NA's on each side, one S on each side, six O's on each side, and four H's on each side. So that is balanced. That gets you two marks in the exam. Like I said before, one mark for the blue bit, writing the formulas, and one mark for the balancing part. Let's look at example two. Zinc reacts with copper chloride to make zinc chloride and copper. Write the symbol equation for this reaction. So step one is write the word equation. Zinc and copper chloride are our reactants that we're starting with, and they turn into zinc chloride and copper. You should be able to recognize that as a displacement reaction where zinc is taking the place of copper because zinc is more reactive than copper. So we're making links to our previous learning. Step two is to write the formulas. So zinc is Zn, copper chloride. So I'll remind you of the crossover method here. Copper is a two plus because it's in that middle section. If in doubt, there are two plus. Chloride is a one minus, it's in group seven. Cross the numbers over, you get CuCl2. So we put the formula in there underneath where we've written copper chloride, so you can see how useful that word equation is. Zinc chloride, once again, cross over the numbers, you get ZnCl2, and copper on its own is just Cu. So that gets you your first mark in the exam. Then we need to balance the equation, and we can see we've got one Zn on each side, one Cu on each side, and two Cl's on each side. 
So this one's actually already balanced. I wanted to show you that sometimes they do just work out that they're balanced already. So you don't need to start messing about with them to change anything. So that would get you two marks again in an exam. So the next section of the video, we're going to have a go at a couple of practice questions. The best way to check your understanding is to have a go at some practice questions. So question one is lithium burns in oxygen to make lithium oxide, write the symbol equation for it. So pause the video, have a go, remember to break it down into three simple steps and then resume the video to see how you got on. So step one, this would be the word equation, lithium and oxygen makes lithium oxide. Step two is write the formulas. So lithium is Li, we all know that oxygen is O2. And for lithium oxide, we need to notice that lithium is in group one, so it makes a one plus. Oxygen is in group six, so that makes a two minus. So we're going to need two lithiums to get the two plus to balance out the two minus of the oxygen. So the formula becomes Li2O, since we've got two lithium ions and one oxide ion. So that would get your first mark in the exam. And then step three is we're going to balance it. So to start with, we've got one lithium on the left, two on the right, two oxygens on the left and only one on the right. So let's start with the lithium and we'll put a big two in front of lithium to give us two lithiums on each side. But that might need to change later. We'll see. And then we need to still balance the oxygens. So we have to put a big two in front of the Li2O. We can't mess with the little numbers and just tag a small number on the end. So we put a big two there and that gives us four lithiums now and two oxygens. So although we've now balanced the two oxygens, we've messed up the lithiums. So we've got to go back and change the lithium to a four to get four lithiums on each side. And the last check, four lithiums on each side, two oxygens on each side, that means we've done it correct. If you got the blue part right, you get one mark. If you also got the balancing correct, you get the second mark. Question two, once again, um, have a go at this question, see how you get on and then resume the video when you think you've had a good go at it. So step one, the word equation is going to be aluminium and copper chloride to make aluminium chloride and copper. So we can see it's a displacement reaction again because aluminium is more reactive than copper. It's displacing it. Step two is to write the formulas. So aluminium is Al. Now, I do this one the crossing over the numbers way. So Cu is a two plus because it's in that middle section. Uh, Cl minus is a one minus as it's in group seven. Cross the numbers over, we get CuCl2. So that formula goes under copper chloride. Now aluminium chloride, aluminium is a three plus because it's in group three. Chloride's a one minus. So when we swap the numbers over, we get AlCl3. So we put that in its correct place and copper. So that blue section would get you the first mark in an exam. We then need to go ahead and balance it. So at the moment we've got one aluminium on each side, one copper on each side, two CLs on the left, three on the right. And if you remember from my video on balancing equations, where we've got a two and a three, the easiest way to balance it is to make them up to six on each side. So that means multiplying the CuCl2 by three to give us our six chlorines. And you'll notice it's now given us three coppers because it's multiplied the whole formula. We need to get six chlorines on the right. So we'll times that by two to give our six chlorines, but that's now changed the aluminium to two. So we've got to go back and do a bit of balancing here. First, we'll sort out the copper. We've got three on the left. So let's get three on the right by times in that by three. And we've still got two aluminiums on the right and only one on the left. So we're going to need to put a big two in front of the aluminium. So two aluminiums on each side, three coppers on each side, six chlorines on each side. That one is now balanced. Now do a bit of self analysis. If you're not getting it right, which part are you getting wrong? Is it that you're struggling with the um, writing the formulas? If so, go back and rewatch my previous video on formulas. If it's the last stage balancing that you're sticking with, um, then go back and watch my video before that, which is all about how to balance equations. And then you should be okay. So once again, 
Thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe if you can.